Sorry, did you want a physics lesson about simple harmonic motion? I got what you need. Class, welcome back. Perhaps today you were wondering, could I learn about simple harmonic motion? Well, you're in luck because today you get to learn about the conditions required to have simple harmonic motion. Now, what kind of things might have simple harmonic motion, you think? Let's look at the definition. All right, so the definition says simple harmonic motion is motion that repeats and has a restoring force. What kind of thing would do that? All right, were you thinking of a pendulum swinging back and forth? Because I think I was thinking of a pendulum swinging back and forth. Oh, look at that. We were thinking the same thing. All right, so why would a pendulum have simple harmonic motion? How does it have a restoring force? Let's think about this for a second. If a pendulum weren't doing anything at all, it would just hang straight vertical. But if you displace it from vertical, it's going to want to swing back down. How come? Gravity's acting vertical, but vertical isn't going to take you sideways. So it's actually the component of tension that's sideways that's going to want to bring that pendulum back. There you can see. It's got a tension force in addition to the vertical gravity force. So if it's happy to be at that vertical equilibrium state and you change one side or the other, then you're going to have a component of tension inward. What else might do that? Oh, were you thinking of a mass on a spring? Me too. All right, so a mass on a spring is happy to just stay at rest and hang at the equilibrium position, just hang out right there. But if you were to stretch it past that point, then the spring force is going to want to bring it back. Because as you stretch springs, they want to recoil back. So it's, it's going to want to have a restoring force too. All right. Today we're going to do a lab together. We're going to crowdfund data points. I think if we each get about five data points, we should have a ton of of really awesome data um, and the data will be on this pendulum app so I'll give you the link you want to click on this and make sure to click the lab and we're going to try to determine how the period of the pendulum is affected by changing the length of the pendulum so um, when you get to this app you're going, you're going to want to click on the little side icon down here at the bottom should have options for a ruler and a stopwatch so click on stopwatch click on ruler and then all you have to do really is swing this thing back and forth and you're gonna change the length whenever you do a new data set um, i'm gonna do two points together with you and so you can see how it's done and then i'll ask that you do a few more so it would be really difficult if you just try to guess how long it takes to swing back and forth without hitting this slow motion function down here. So if you slow it down, it's going to be a lot easier to tell when to stop and start a cycle. So let's start it when it gets all the way to the end. We're going to press play. and one period is the amount of time it takes to complete a cycle so we're gonna wait till it comes back and forth all the way back over here and then we're gonna press stop right there 1.62 seconds so we had a length of 0.7 meters and we had 1.62 I think meters no seconds all right so you're gonna to go to this shared data Google sheet when you get to the shared data sheet, take the point that you just um, observed, in this case 0.7 and then a time of 1.62, and just type it in there. And 
your data point should show up. Now one data point is not enough, so I'm going to need some help. Let's get another data point. Alright, back to the simulator. We just did point 0.7, so let's change the length up a bit. How about point 0.88? That should be unique. Alright, so let's set this thing in motion. And why don't we start the timer when it gets to the peak on the left side here. We'll just start it. And there it goes. Super slow motion. Super easy to figure out. Alright, on the way back. Hey, I hope everybody's having a good day while we wait for this pendulum. There it is. Boom. Stop the timer. 1.87 seconds. Let's put that in our data set. So the new length was 0.88, so we'll type that in. And then the time it took was 1.87, I believe. Alright, so that's all I want everybody to do. I want you to get five different data points and just plug them into this sheet. So as you can see, I put in two data points. Now we might be wondering, is that a direct relation because that can connect two points with a line? No. Two points is never enough. You don't know if there's a curve. You don't know if it's a straight line. You don't know if it's a sine graph. But we're going to find out together. So I look forward to seeing all of our cool data points all together. If you have any questions, just type them in the comments.